Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to use Monomod, um, the runtime detour uh, class specifically, to hook Gungeon methods and also just any C sharp method um, so that we can edit, we can kind of inject our own code into pre existing methods inside of Gungeon. Um, so, first thing you want to do is download uh, Monomod from uh, this GitHub re repo. Um, you can support him on Patreon, he's a real cool guy, very nice person. Um, and you want to download uh, the zip here um, and extract it somewhere. Uh, when you do, you'll open, you can open up this uh, folder that it's going to produce and open up the Monomod solution. Um, inside of there, what you can do is go over here to the right side. Uh, you'll see monomod.runtimedetour. Right click that, build. Um, you're probably going to get a bunch of errors. Uh, I already got all my errors, so it's just going to say up to date. Um, but it's okay if there is errors, it's, it doesn't matter. Um, so once you're done with that, you can close this. Um, and then what we need to do is go into the uh, monomod runtime detour folder here. Go to bin, go to debug, and then net35. And then in here, we're going to need two files uh, the monomod.utils.dll and the monomod.runtimedetour.dll. Um, in order to use runtime detour in our C sharp, like in our in Visual Studio, we only need this one. But in order for Gungeon to run runtime detour, run with runtime detour, it needs to have both of these things included. So you're going to want to grab both of those files, uh, slap them into your dependencies folder, wherever it is. Um, you can also just, I, I just have them on my desktop for right now. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go into our uh, example mod here, um, which is which we made in the last video. Uh, I've cleared it out so that we can work uh, with a new base. Um, still got all the other references, um, but I'm going to add these two references, the monomod.utils and the monomod.runtimedetour. So we'll add those. Um, and once we do that, then we should be able to start using uh, runtime or monomod dot runtime detour. Uh, we're also going to need runtime or we're also going to need to be using system uh, dot reflection, and we're also going to be need we're also going to probably going to need uh, Unity engine. Um, all of these things can be gotten from our uh, references that we have now. Okay, so what does this runtime detour do exactly? It allows us to use a class called hook. Um, and hook is really powerful because it allows us to basically uh, call our own method whenever another method is called. So say um, we want to call a method every time the player is spawned in or something, or every time a, lo a level starts loading um, or finishes loading, then we can hook the level loading method or the player spawn method and then we can add our own code to it so that way we can um, either overwrite the previous pre-existing code or just add our own stuff to it so um, what we're going to do first is we're going to create the method that is actually going to be um, hooked or we're going to create our method that's going to get called by the hook so what we're going to want to do is create a public static um, well, actually, we don't know if it's going to be void or, void or not yet. Let's actually go find a method to, to hook first. So to do that, I recommend using um, dnspy. You can get it from this GitHub repository. I'll link both of these in the description. Um, and what you want to do is download this, um, unzip it, and then you can use the um, dnspy. You can launch uh, dnspy.exe and open up um, a folder by just doing file uh, open. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to, uh, you want to navigate to your enter the Gungeon directory. Here we go, enter the Gungeon, ETG data, manage, and then you can open up this assembly.csharp.dll. I've already got it open. Um, and this is, it'll decompile all the code for you. And this is the actual Gungeon code that you're looking at right now. So, well, it's not the actual Gungeon code, but it's, it's the logical equivalent of the Gungeon code. Um, it's a little bit messier because it's uh, written by a computer and not a uh, human. Um, and it's just being read from the logic. But it's it's got all of the stuff. And there is a huge amount of stuff inside of this um, directory. Um, there is so much code that goes into <laughs> Unity and Gungeon. 
um, working together. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to search for a specific class. Uh, specifically, we're going to search for the player controller class. Um, this this has player controller in the first result here, so I'm just going to double click on that to open up the player controller class. Um, and then we're going to look for a method that we want to overwrite. So we could overwrite uh, increase poison, or not overwrite, but hook. Um, we could do increase fire. Um, we don't really need to do that right now. What we can, um, what I'm thinking of is to make it so that every time the player does damage, it causes an explosion at the enemy that it damaged. So there's a method in here called on did damage or something. Yeah, that's it. So on did damage. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this method and we're going to hook it so that we can add our own code to it. So I'm just gonna copy this, um, copy this method, and we're gonna paste it into here. This isn't exactly what we need just yet. Um, what we're gonna need to do is make this static. It has to be static for um, the hook to read it, um, and then we're going to uh, give it any name. Actually, it doesn't have to be on the damage, so we can call this damage hook if we wanted to. Um, and it needs to take two extra parameters in addition to all of these parameters. One of them is going to be an action, and one of them is going to be a reference to the object that is performing, that is calling this method. So um, what we need is a action, um, and the action is going to take all of the parameters inside of this method that we're making right now. Um, and we're going to need a player controller uh, because that is the class that we're getting this method from. So we'll call this self um, and we will uh, basically just list, just grab all of these things and put them inside of this action here uh, and remove the uh, variable names because we don't need those. Uh, all right, so there we go. Now I've got an action that takes all of these uh, parameters. We'll call it a rig and that's just to say that this is gonna call the original method um, that instead of the actual hook that we're making, or instead of making calling this method, it'll call the original one that we're uh, editing, basically. And then this will be a reference to the object that is calling, uh, it'll be like the actual instantiated player controller object. Okay, so now uh, in here, we're, we're gonna want to call a rig at some point, unless you're trying to just completely overwrite a method. Um, I would call a rig and pass in all of the parameters. Um, so we got self, we've got damage done, we've got fatal, and we've got a uh, target. So uh, yeah, just all of these all of these parameters we'll pass into there. And then here we can either do stuff um, after the method is called or before it's called, but I usually do it after because it's a little bit less scary. Um, <laughs> So what we can do now is we need to actually create the hook that's gonna call this uh, method. So we'll create a new hook. Uh, we'll call it um, damage hook is equal to new hook. And we'll create some space here for us to put some parameters in. So these are long parameters. Um, they're, gonna, they're gonna end up being long. Um, the first parameter, both of the parameters are going to be uh, method base. One of them is going to be a method base and one of them is going to be a method info. Um, so what we need to do is get the method base from the player controller or from the player controller class called uh, uh, on did damage. So we'll do type of player controller dot get method. And in here we'll pass the name of the method. Uh, this one's called on did damage. And then we will uh, pass in some binding flags to tell us to like narrow down the search for this method. So we know that this method is public and we know that it is non-static. So we're going to say binding flags dot um, instance for non-static. Um, and then we'll say binding flags dot uh, public. Uh, instant, this little or operator just is a bitwise or and it'll combine these two flags into one flag that uh, like you can use to check both of those conditions. It's kind of like an and. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do type of uh, our class. We're gonna get a reference to this method. So we're gonna get um, our class name 
we're going to do get method and then we're going to do or we're going to call it damage hook because that's the name or let me just I always like to just copy this because I have a tendency to mistype these things all right and that's that's it we're done now we can add whatever code we want to the end or beginning of this method um, including changing the parameters like a good set self to a different player object if we wanted to we could change what damage done is equal to um, I don't know if that would actually deal the damage change the amount of damage that it does but um, we might be able to kill the enemy or something I don't know it doesn't matter um, what we can do here is we can just print out let's just print out to the console um, player did damage and then we'll just add the amount of damage that we did so just do that and that'll give us some info about whether or not we're doing that and that's that right there is a damage tracker mod so that's pretty cool by itself um, let's build this and then uh, we're gonna need to do a little extra work here um, so we're gonna do the same thing where we just go into projects and then the mod all the way down to bin debug um, and paste that into our enter the dungeons slash mods folder with the same name as the mod um, and then we're going to take those two uh, runtime detour and utils uh, files from our dependencies and we're going to copy them into this folder um, so that Gungeon can recognize it and run it. Alright, uh, so let's try running the game now. We'll see if this went through. Uh, we'll press F1 once the game boots up, or once ETG mod um, initializes so that we can see if the code uh, loaded correctly. It looks like it did because we have example mod right here. Um, I'm going to press Q to quick start real quick. We'll load up the first level and then hopefully when we do damage to enemies uh, we should see that uh, in the console it'll, well I've got a whole bunch of other stuff from other mods here, but um, we'll see, we should see in the console that uh, how much damage we've done. So there you go, I player did 6 damage because I did 6 damage. Um, if I give myself uh, fat bullets or something, which will increase my damage by a little bit, we should see a different number. Uh, there we go, 7.8. And that's it. So now we have verified that our method is being called and we can do something with it. So just for fun, we're going to make it so that every time the player does damage, uh, the enemy gets or an explosion uh, is initialized on top of the enemy so let's do vector 2 enemy position is equal to um, the target dot uh, sprite dot world center um, if you do just, if you just do target dot transform dot position it'll be really weird for every different enemy so don't do that do, do uh, get to the center of the sprite because it uh, makes more sense and then there's a class called Exploder um, that you can use and you can do default, do default explosion. All you have to do is pass in a uh, vector2 enemy position and um, I don't know what the source normal is but you can just do an empty uh, vector there. We'll build that, we will launch the game. We'll, or we'll replace our mod DLL and then we'll launch the game and hopefully this should work. Um, there's one other thing that we can do with uh, Runtime Detour that I know of and that is get access to private fields. Um, so I'll just walk through that real quick while this is loading up. Um, if we need to get a private variable, um, there's one, there's a whole bunch of private variables in this class like m underscore enemies killed, m uh, damage gun damage threshold if you want to change these values without actually being in the class because I mean we can't we, we, don't have to, we would have to edit the original class in order to do that because they're private um, so if you want to do that what you can do is go is make a field info object we'll call it um, let's do enemies killed so we'll call it um, 
M underscore enemies killed. Doesn't actually have to have the same name. Um, and then we'll do type of uh, what is this player controller? Player controller dot get field. And we will call it M underscore enemies killed. Right? That's the same spelling. And we can do um, we can add some binding flag attributes to it. So binding flags dot non public because uh, this is a private field. And then uh, what we can do here is to edit the that field or to get the if you want to just get the value of that field, you can do m underscore enemies killed dot get value. Pass in um, the reference to the object that you're trying to get the value from. So in this case, we're trying to get uh, from self because that's our player object, player controller object. And that will return an object, just an, like a generic system object, I think. Um, so you'll need to convert that to whatever the original field is. So in this case, it's an int. So we'll say int killed is equal to cast this whole thing to an int. Um, if you want to set the value of this, then what you can do is say m underscore enemies killed dot set value um, self and then set the value so we'll just set, set it to killed or something like that and that's how you would set uh, the value of a private field I think I'm not 100% TBH um, okay so now we should be able to cause an explosion anytime we deal damage to an enemy so let's try that and yeah, it's beautiful 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 I love it uh, that will deal damage to you so watch that all right, so yeah, there you go. Um, I think that's gonna be it for now. Uh, I'm not sure what, if, when, or if I'm gonna make more videos about modding. Um, there's a lot you can do with it, and it's kind of hard to describe how to, to like give a lesson on what exactly is cap is possible with Gungeon. Um, but regardless, I think uh, so far, if if you just take these tools that I've given you so far, then it's, you could make some pretty cool stuff. Um, okay, so that's going to be it. Um, thanks for watching uh, the video, and I will see you guys later.